the IBS is really a diagnosis that means you don't have IBD. Now, IBD is irritable bowel disease versus irritable bowel syndrome. So irritable bowel disease is stuff like Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. So if you get a diagnosis like IBS, it usually means I walked into the doctor complaining I've got some indigestion and I don't have Crohn's, I don't have celiac, I don't have ulcerative colitis. The colonoscopy was clean, but you're still in my office complaining, so we're gonna throw an IBS label on you. Now, unfortunately, medically, there's no known cause for IBS. We just go, well, I don't know what it is, but here's your collection of symptoms. So to us, when we get an IBS diagnosis in the office, it just means you don't have IBD and you're complaining of gut problems. If you have constipation, we label you with IBS-C, which is IBS constipation. If you've got loose stools, we label you with IBS-D. Now, we find a couple really common causes of IBS. And the most common by far being something called SIBO. Now, SIBO is called small intestine bacterial overgrowth. Now, in the functional medicine world, we argue about how good a term this is because um, it's not just bacteria. You can have small intestine fungal overgrowth. And so that's SIFO. So then people argue it should just be called small intestine microbial overgrowth or SIMO. And then I just start laughing because now we're, there's too many acronyms and arguments for me to keep track of. So, but basically what we get is you're supposed to have a balance of good and bad bugs in your colon. And if that goes out of balance, people get digestive problems. That's usually what we find is you have an out of balance gut microbiome. Sometimes that's grown up into your small intestine. Sometimes it's still in your colon. But basically you're supposed to have some good bacteria, some yeast, you know, all these things in your gut and it's gotten kind of out of whack and kitty wampus. This is the most common thing that we see causing indigestion and bloating in the office. So what's leaky gut? So leaky gut is actually our intestines have a mucous membrane and then under the mucous membrane you have a very tight cell wall because you only want to let in food that you've digested. You don't want everything getting into your blood. And so your cells actually have, when they all line up like this, I tell people it's like Red Rover, Red Rover, where you, you ever play that game as a kid. So you form these little tight junctions with the cell next to you and these tight junctions are called zonulin. And so what we see in leaky gut is we see a breaking of the zonulin, which means your Red Rover, Red Rover line is all spread out and you can let extra stuff through. Now the problem with letting extra stuff through your gut is if it gets to your bloodstream, there's only one thing to clean it out and that's your immune system. And so if your immune system is seeing partially digested food proteins, the immune system has to cause inflammation because if the immune system activates, you get inflammation. And so if your immune system has to clean up crud that's spilling into your blood from leaky gut, then you're gonna have inflammation from food. And this can lead to a myriad of symptoms, anywhere from you know, headaches to pain, to tiredness, to fatigue, those kinds of things. So this is where we look at leaky gut really means the lining of the intestines is not healthy. Then we go, well, why do you have leaky gut? Some of the most common reasons, once again, are you got some bug imbalances. Candida is known to, it'll shoot a little hyphae into your uh, cell wall, and then it secretes enzymes which degrade your tight junctions, and then it opens up uh, so it can get into your uh, bloodstream. It then quickly secretes immune suppressing chemicals to tell your immune system to leave it alone. So a lot of these bugs are actually highly adaptive to try to penetrate and get into your um, system. Candida is not the only one that does stuff like that, but what we most often see is if you have leaky gut, it's coming from some kind of bacterial or yeast imbalance. Every once in a while, parasites too. You don't have to go to a foreign country to pick up a parasite. Amoebas, protozoan, even a couple worms still here in North America. Um, so we find bug imbalances to be the main cause of a lot of gut dysfunction.